Good morning. Good morning once more. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming for today's service. Just please the Lord for you to be in his presence. And today, I want us to continue from where we left last Sunday. Last Sunday, we were ministered of the, our network. Our network, we say that our network means our contacts, the connections that we have, it means hooking up, socializing, it means mingling, the people you hang around with, that is our network, or your company, you can call it your company. Then we found that it can be good company or bad company. Then we checked Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 to 6. And we were seeing who are the blessed. And we found that the blessed are the ones who walk, not even stand in the way of sinners. Then we went ahead in Proverbs and we saw some instructions that Solomon was giving about the wicked and the just. We even saw that if you stay with the wise, you will be wise. If you stay with ungodly, you will be ungodly, or else you will be miserable. So we concluded that it's good to make the right decisions. Then we asked ourselves, how do we know the good network, the good connections or company to hang around, to meet good help with, it's only in the word of the Lord. We read that. This is only found in the law of the Lord, in the word of the Lord. And when we are in the word of the Lord, we allow the Holy Spirit to be in us. And when the Holy Spirit is in us, we are able to discern and know which network, which company, which people to socialize with or not. So we also found that many of the afterlives that many people have is because of the network, because of the Kanban that they have been living with. And we concluded that it's very critical to make the right decisions on whom to accompany yourself with, on whom to stay with, on whom to hook up with, on whom to stay with. And we found in the scriptures that the Bible says, the ungodly, the bad company, you should not even eat with them. Not even standing with them, not even walking with them, you should not even eat with them. And then we had a disclaimer that if you found yourself in their midst, you can share the word of the Lord. You are there to evangelize and bring them to the right kingdom of God. Because they are in the kingdoms, you bring them to the kingdom now of the Lord. Today, I want us to look at a certain story of a guy who made wrong decisions and he left the right company and he went to live and enjoy life with the wrong company. This guy, you all know him very well, is in Luke chapter 15 and verse 11 to verse 13. His name is the prodigal son. This was a, a man who was okay, who was doing well initially. And this guy... Uh, 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 this guy uh, came to some time, came to, in a certain time, he made some decision to leave the right Kanban and go and enjoy life with the wrong or bad Kanban. This guy is called the prodigal son. Then he said, our main verse will be verse 13. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. This is Jesus giving this story, a parable. And the young of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Verse 13, we're only reaching verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, to a far country, and there wasted his possessions 
with prodigal living. With prodigal living. This guy was in a certain setup of a family. Every one of us comes from a family. No one evolved from somewhere. Everyone comes from a family. And we can see he was living in a family. There were four. His mother, his elder brother, and his father. There were other people, support staff, who were living with them. But this guy, at some time, we can say an evil spirit came upon his mind. And he decided to leave that company of his, his people and go and have, uh, 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 have a lustrous life in a far land. Now, this was a person we all know. We've read this story day Every day we know this story. At a given time, you've read about this story. This is what I saw. This guy left the right kanban. He went to enjoy life. He went to a bad kanban. And when he went to a bad kanban, he spent all that he was given. All in his inheritance. The livelihood that his father had gathered, he spent all of it. He was spending in, in immoral, immoral, life behaviors, what we call, uh, 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 this name is not coming. He spent his life enjoying himself. He spent his life sinning like no more in a far country. Then after that, he, he, where he went, there was a kanban that he was living with. Having left the right kanban or the right network that he was connected with, we can see the results. After he had finished all the goods, all the inheritance, the monies that he was given, he started suffering. He met one person and he went to look for a job. When he went to look for a job, this guy told him, the only job that I can give you is to look after the pigs. And there was no food. It was unpleasant work, unhealth work that he was doing. So he was looking after the pig. He didn't even have good feel to it. He would hit what the pigs were eating. That was the consequence of the choice, the decision that he had made to leave the right kanban of his family and go and live with an godly kanban. He actually, he, when we read in Psalms 1 last time, we saw that blessed is the man who walks not, nor stands in the way of sinners. You see? This, that is the blessed person. This person was like a cursed person because he left. He left. He walked in the. He walked and stood and spent time in burnt kanban. Today I came to tell you, there is a lot of sense. There is a lot of significance in the choices that you choose. Many of us, you see us today, is because of the choices that we choose. We agreed and pre appreciated on Sunday that you are who you spend time with. And that is the truth. So it is very important and very significant in today's life to be inscripted in the word of God. To spend time in the word of God. All of us come from families which fear the Lord. Do not leave your family and go to a far country and spend time doing immoral things, spending time, walking, standing, eating, having conversations with people who do not fear the Lord. They will influence you. We agree that we are men. We are men made with flesh and blood. And we are not supermen. We can be influenced. We can be brought to those bad behaviors. And by the end of the day, it has to lose. And we saw that we should not lose anyone in the name of Jesus because of these behaviors. What does a far country mean? A far country means forgetfulness of God. This guy went to a far country. He left the right company and went to a far country. When we read in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 19, this is Paul describing how life is in a far country far far in a far country in a far away from god then i say therefore and testify in the lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the gentiles walk in the futility of their mind 
Many of us are walking in the futility of their mind. They are walking in the knowledge of their mind. Not in the knowledge of the word of God. This guy was walking and living in the futility of his mind. Having the understanding darkened. He was darkened in his understanding. These are people who are living the right Kanban, the right network. And their futile mind leads them to bad Kanban. Having the understanding darkened, their understanding is darkened. Your understanding should not be darkened because you already know the word of the Lord. Being alienated from the life of God. This is exactly the characteristics of the prodigal sons. The prodigal son, we are told in Luke chapter 15. And the prodigal sons living today. Because today we have a lot of them. Prodigal sons. There are very many. Those who do not follow the law of God. Those who do not hear the word. They hear the word of the Lord, but they do not follow. Those who have gone afar from the right company. Being alienated from the life of God. In the life of God, we get understanding. In the life of God, we get direction. In the life of God, we are led to our, to our pursuit of life. We are helped of the Lord. Because of, why are they doing that? Because of ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their hearts. Many youth, many of us today have been blinded in their hearts. They cannot see the future. They cannot see the life in the word of God. And this is what, what, what was happening in this man who uh, sought for his inheritance. This represents the world. Bad company where evil flourishes. All immoral behavior, vices are found and even celebrated in. This is where this guy was. This is in a far country. I came today to tell you there is no help in the far country. There is no help in a far country where you have separated yourself from the right company. This signifies the abode of the ungodly with whom he feels comfortable with. These people, they feel comfort comfortable in this bad behavior. You know, there are always two kingdoms. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And every kingdom competes, fights to win the battle. You see, even the devil, when the devil was proud and he brought some issues in heaven, he was sent here on earth. And when he was sent here on earth, uh, he lives here where we live. He still wants to win. He has an advantage of hedge. The devil has an, an advantage of hedge. Let me make this point as a disclaimer. If there is something to be copied of the devil, it's confidence. This guy is very confident to bring you down. He does not uh, get exhausted. Achokangi, that we read a various verse in some times that when we were asleep, the enemy came and he planted weed in our garden. And the Bible says after planting weed, he went. When he comes and corrupts you, when he comes and shows you the bad Kanban, he leaves and he goes to another person. But blessed are we, for the Bible says the plants which have been planted in our lives and they are not of the Lord, they shall be uprooted. This morning we uproot them. We pull them down, we destroy them, and we throw them away. We plant and we build the purpose of the Lord in our lives in the name of Jesus. Therefore, the devil is at work. The devil is at work. Kila moja napigana kuleta watu kwa upande wake. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. And many of us have resorted in the kingdom of darkness. A few of us and many of us also are trying in the kingdom of light. Blessed be you who are hearing this word. There is a lot of competition. There is a lot of strife. For the kingdom of darkness also wants to win the race. The far country also signifies no self-control. Eh? You don't have self-control. You know yourself. You are in a far country. I call you back. 
to the right Kanban. I call you back to the right network. Don't be in a far country. In a far country, there is eating with pigs. In a far country, there is a lot of suffering. In a far country, there is death. In a far country, there is no hope. So I call you back in the right company, in the right network. This guy, when he came back, when you read those other verses, he was celebrated. He was welcomed. He was well-dressed. That is the right company's characteristics. The characteristics of the right Kanban. So I just came today to, to, to insist and to, to press on more and to you. Never allow yourself to be misled by people. Because in a far country, there is no hope. In a far country, it's only suffering. It's only eating with pigs. Bad life. No self-control. Let's check Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. This is Canality. Canality. This is what happens in a far country. We are trying to check what happens in a far country. When you leave the right Kanban, when you leave the right network, in, uh, in other words, to be precise, when you leave the word of God, what happen, happens in a, uh, in a far country? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. There is no self-control. They are led by their, their bodies, not by the spirit of God. They are led by their bodies, those who are in a far country. Let's check. Then I have a question to you. How are we trying to find satisfaction in life? How are we trying to, to find peace? How are we trying to find fulfillment in our lives? Psalms 119 verse 9. I'm finishing with Psalms 119 and verse 19. Verse 119 and verse 9. Sorry. Psalms, how shall a young man live? How can a young man cleanse his way? Then this is the answer. By taking heed according to the word of God. Everything begins with the word of God. Everything ends with the word of God. We can only get resolve from the word of God. Could you have been planning to engage in a bad company? Could you have been having mind of engaging in a bad network? Take heed according to the word of God. Take heed according to the word of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My time is almost over. I just came today to encourage ourselves that there is hope in the right Kanban. And in the right Kanban is where it is taken according to the word of God. No one shall be like a prodigal son here. No one shall be a prodigal son here. We shall all see the purpose of our lives being fulfilled because we shall live in the right network. We shall pray and the Lord shall help us to live in the right Kanban. We shall not be misled. We were not born to be misled. We were born to make it in life. That's why the Bible says he has a plan for you. A plan to give you hope and an expected end. Therefore, there is hope in the right Kanban. I welcome you to serve the Lord. In the house of the Lord, that is where the right Kanban is. Where the word of God and the real word, the true word of God is discussed. That is in the right Kanban. You see, many of the things we see today is because of the Kanban. People, youth don't go to church. People don't want to go to church. They don't want to be obedient by checking it according to the word. They are misled. Go outside here. You find a lot of people and they will give you excuses. Someone tell, told me excuses of not attending to church are always irrelevant. Very irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. Why should you not go to church? This is where we are identified. This is where we are built. This is where we are helped, helped. But because the other kingdom is at work, we find ourselves not in the right place. We find ourselves not in the right network because we have neglected the way. I pray today that the Lord will help you and the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus.
let us stand up and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. This is the day that you have made, dear Lord. We appreciate your word, dear Lord, that, Lord, there is no hope in a far country having left the right company. There is no hope. We pray, dear Lord, the Holy Spirit will help us to discern and make the right decisions on who to accompany ourselves with, on whom to get connected, on whom to get networked with in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every plan that was planted in our lives when we were asleep and is not of you, Lord, we uproot it, we pull it down, we destroy it, we throw it away in the name of Jesus. We plant and we build the purpose of the Lord, the way of the Lord that is taking heed according to your word in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We pray to have been in the far country. The Lord, they will come to their senses and find their way to the right place. We worship you, Lord, and we honor you. We thank you because you've heard and answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God a